Welcome to another Tech Tuesday at FiTech. Today we're going to talk about the FiTech GhostSpark CDI ignition system and how to install it properly. The first thing to do after you open the package is remove the instruction manual and read it carefully. There are several different installation configurations depending on your distributor and your engine setup such as whether it's got a carburetor or an EFI system. When you first open the package, make sure you have your CDI box, your accessory kit that comes with a bunch of installation hardware, little wiring adapters. Make sure you have the two wire extension harness and also the main harness, this is connected to the vehicle and connects into the CDI box. Check your instructions carefully for exactly what you'll need for your installation. Today I'm going to cover the basics on two different installs. One's going to be using a throttle body system with ignition timing control and our Ghost Park CDI box. The other one's going to be a mechanical and vacuum advanced distributor connected directly to the Ghost Park CDI box and just using the tack signal to run the EFI system. This is also very similar to how a carburetor system would be run as well. The FiTech GhostSpark CDI box is a CDI box. CDI stands for Capacitive Discharge Ignition. It'll do multiple sparks from low RPM up to about 3,000 RPM. And above 3,000 RPM, it'll still have a single high energy ignition that can ignite rich and lean mixtures up to over 10,000 RPM. Some of the other benefits of the CDI box is that it'll improve starting with rich or lean mixtures. It'll improve idle quality because it's multiple sparking. It's going to make sure the spark plugs ignite the air fuel mixture in the cylinder. The FiTech GhostSpark CDI ignition box is compatible with a variety of ignition systems from points to HEI to two-wire pickup distributors. The first car that I'm going to install the GhostSpark CDI system on has a Go Port system which is very similar to our throttle body system. It's using timing control and a remote coil. So this instruction page right here is exactly what I'm going to follow. After removing everything from the package and inspecting everything and reading the instructions carefully, let's go to the car and install this. When installing the CDI system, make sure that only the two wires that are coming from the CDI box are connected to the ignition coil. Don't connect any tack signals and don't use the coil for an RPM source for any of your other systems such as a transmission controller or any other tachometers that you might have in your car it will damage them. The difference between a CDI ignition system and an inductive ignition system is that a CDI system will output a high voltage pulse to the ignition coil and the coil will act like a transformer to amplify the voltage to about 50,000 volts. An inductive system will dwell the ignition coil by making current flow through it by grounding one side and then disconnect that grounded side which causes a magnetic field collapse which causes a high voltage induction into one side of the ignition coil and it amplifies it also to about 50,000 volts. The two systems will have a completely different input signal. So a tachometer or other system that needs a signal that's like an inductive system cannot be used with connecting to the ignition coil. For this reason there's a separate TAC output on the FiTech GhostSpark CDI system. That TAC output can be connected to your tachometer or be connected to other devices such as transmission controllers or what, what have you in your car that needs an RPM source. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm connecting the two-wire input on the FiTech EFI system, connecting it to the two-wire output of the distributor. So. With timing control, the two-wire signal from the distributor goes into the FiTech EFI system. That distributor is locked out. It's sending a signal into the EFI system, and the EFI system is going to send a coil output to the CDI system, and the CDI system will handle the sparking. For the wire harness install, it's important to make sure you route things carefully. The high output wires need to be routed separately from the main harness with the battery and switch inputs. For the battery hookups, make sure the battery wire is actually connected to the battery. That way you can ensure that it gets strong enough voltage during cranking to actually start and spark and fire rich mixtures. The ignition switch input 
make sure it's connected to the same wire that fed your ignition system before. That'll make sure it's hot during cranking, which it needs to be in order to spark while you're trying to start the engine. The blue wire is the tack output wire. This set outputs a, a square wave that can be used by some EFI systems or, and also by tachometers to read the RPM. The white wire is the points input wire. I'm gonna be connecting it to this throttle body system via the coil output wire of the throttle body. That outputs a timing signal that will command the CDI box to actually spark. When doing timing control, such as on this engine, we will not be using the two-wire input of the GoSpark CDI box. This is only used when you're going to be running distributor timing control and not computer timing control. The Phytech GoSpark CDI box can also be used with six-cylinder and four-cylinder engines. For six-cylinder, just cut one of these wire loops. For four-cylinder, cut both of these wire loops to let the CDI box know what kind of engine it's being run on. The CDI box has an LED indicator on the front that lets you know when the ignition switch is actually turned on. When connecting the wire harness connector to the GoSpark CDI box, engage it properly, and then set the lock so that the wire harness can't be pulled out. When mounting the GoSpark, make sure the connector is pointed downwards to avoid any water collection in the connector. Mount it maybe on an inner fender or a firewall. Don't mount it on the engine, it vibrates too much and it's too hot. But any kind of position where the harness can still reach the distributor and the ignition coil should be suitable. Just try to make sure it's not exposed to road debris, make sure it's not exposed to falling water, such as when you're washing your car or rainwater. But uh, other than that, it's pretty flexible where you mount the CDI box. On this Nova, I've decided to mount the Ghost Park inside on the firewall. This is a pretty safe place to mount it. It's going to be away from water and the weather. It's going to be inside where I can reach it, underneath the dashboard. It's going to be easy to service. I think it's a perfect spot for this car. On this engine, after we've installed the Ghost Park, we do need to set the ignition timing. It's timing control, so I'll start the engine, set the ignition lock mode to Put the computer to command everything to 30 degrees and I'll use this dial back timing light and adjust the distributor to actually get 30 degrees on this. Some dial back timing lights do not work well with multiple spark ignition systems. If you rev the engine to 3000 they usually revert to about a single spark which will let the dial back or any other timing light work properly again. So I've got the, I've got the timing light installed. I'm going to start the engine. 